Hello, my name is Professor David Tizard. Welcome to your second advanced conversation lecture. Uh, thank you for your efforts during the first one. I went through all the files and it was great to see uh, you building your exposure to native uh, or you know English materials and try to understand them and then also try to learn from them and use it yourself. Uh, there will be some announcements at the end of the video about the assignment and some things with the e-class learning system, so look out for them. But for this week, let's let's get into the topic, which, as you can probably see, I hope you've already watched some of the videos that I've linked for you, is Korea in the time of COVID-19, which have, it's a play on uh, a famous book title, Love in the Time of Cholera. Fantastic book. Have a look if you have not read it. The reason I've chosen uh, some materials for this week based on COVID-19, because it's happening around us and because you might have friends from other countries, you might have pen pals or international friends from your time abroad, they might be asking you, what is it like in South Korea? What's it like in Seoul? So the purpose of this lesson is to make you better, make you more able to describe what's going on in your life. It's not to tell you what I think is happening, but it's to allow you to express yourself through language and through expressions uh, based on these materials that we've looked at. So I hope you understand the purpose. It should be quite clear. Please don't forget to look at some of the vocabulary we go through. Um, just to be 100% sure that you haven't missed anything, this was the first video uh, that I asked you to watch, which is Kang Kyung-hwa on the BBC, the Andrew, uh, Andrew Ma show. This was the main material. Again, I chose you this. Uh, I chose this for you because I'm slowly easing you in to uh, completely Western materials. You know, we started with that K-pop video and it had a little bit of uh, Korean in there and the topics were easier for you. Today we're starting with Kang Kyung Hwa, so slowly you're getting in there. I'm not throwing you straight into the deep end yet. But of course, if you want to challenge yourself, I did put this as the uh, secondary material. This is a little bit harder, and I would say it's a little bit harder because um, Michael Osterholm, uh, this is Joe Rogan, the other guy, Michael Osterholm speaking, he doesn't enunciate very well. You know, he sort of mumbles a little bit and it's it's kind of hard to catch what he's saying sometimes but that's real life and that's how people talk and this is a, a natural is one of the world's most popular podcasts so have a look at that one if you want to challenge yourself but don't be sad or disheartened if you don't get everything so those are the two primary materials make sure you've had a look at least of the first one Now, if we were in class, these would be the things that uh, I would ask you to discuss. And if we stay online for a long time, I'm going to sort out some discussion groups somehow. So get ready for that. You're not going to be talking to yourself for too long. Uh, but this would be the opening discussion. How has your life changed since the outbreak of COVID-19? How has your life changed? If, if you want to be serious about this, look at the verb tense, right? Look at the verb tense, you'll notice that how has it changed from then until now, right? From the past, from when it happened until now, how has it changed? Right? So it's kind of like a present perfect. I have started. Yeah? I have started. I have started spending more time with my children. That might be one because we're at home more. So how has your life changed? I have started ing. I have started spending more time with my children. I have started watching Itaewon class. I've started reading in the morning. I've started feeling a little bit heavy because I'm not walking and moving as much, being a jiptori, always in the home. But I've started feeling a little bit heavy. So I've started ing and you can explain things like this you say this has happened right it has happened i have started doing this um or i have stopped i guess that would make sense yeah i've stopped uh, i've stopped going to the music studio i've stopped playing concerts these days 
I have had to. I've had to. I have had to cancel some concerts. My band had some concerts booked, so I have had to cancel some concerts. Interesting structure. What have you had to do? What have you had to do recently since this? So it's different between I had to in the past, right? In the past, I had to. Now I have to. But since this COVID is a period of time, I have had to. It's quite advanced, but you should be able to get that. I have had to. Negative. How would you do a negative one of those? I haven't had to take the subway. I haven't had to go to my office. So I have had to or I haven't had to. There'll be useful uh, structures, especially when you're dealing with this one. So it's this here, right? Because we're talking about two, we're talking about this period of time from when it started. By the way, I ordered a stylus, so I should have. I have bought things to make my lectures. We're talking about this in here, right? From the start until now. It's not one moment in time, it's a period. Question number two, you'll be asked, have there been any positives that have come from this? Well, yes, you could say, well, yes, I have started doing this, I've started doing that. It's very similar. Yeah. Let's have a look at number three. It might be a little bit more interesting. Do you have any tips or suggestions for staying healthy during this time or anything for ING? Yeah. Do you have any tips or suggestions for losing weight? Do you have any tips or suggestions for improving it's always this for ing right for for junsisa for ing for staying healthy during this time for improving your english for uh being social sociable do you have any tips or suggestions well how would you start this sentence you could say i'd recommend i'd recommend that's i would i would recommend right i'd recommend trying to create a schedule I'd recommend trying to create a schedule and sticking to it. So every, you know, six o'clock you, you read your books and at four o'clock you do some exercise. I'd recommend creating a schedule and sticking to it. I'd recommend ING and ING. I'd recommend creating a schedule and sticking to it. You could also say, I recommend, it would be exactly the same and different people would say different things, but I'd recommend, I recommend. ING. You could also use what's a synonym for recommend. So I'd recommend creating a schedule. If we change the word recommend, I'd mo 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 creating a schedule. What word could you use? I'd suggest. I'd suggest. Right? There's the myongsa, suggest and dongsa. So I'd suggest. I'd suggest using face talk. Yeah? I'd suggest. Uh, buying some books from Amazon or Kyobo or something like that. I probably wouldn't recommend, right? So I pro I wouldn't recommend. I'd recommend. I wouldn't recommend. I wouldn't recommend. But here we've got probably. We've got this busa. So we're, I think it's busa, adverb. We're, we're reducing the strength. I definitely wouldn't recommend. I definitely wouldn't recommend drinking too much it's very easy if you're at home all day every day you don't have to go out i definitely wouldn't recommend drinking too much i probably wouldn't recommend getting too into netflix because you can get sucked in and then you that's all you want to do so i probably wouldn't recommend getting too into netflix of course you need to watch some things you need to keep your uh, entertainment and, and your positive attitude but Listen to the nuance and how they're expressed. I, I definitely wouldn't recommend drinking too much, and I probably wouldn't recommend getting too into Netflix. Last week we studied be into something. Notice how these bushas, I definitely, I probably really make sentences sound natural, and you can put examples back together. So I definitely wouldn't recommend drinking, and I, and I probably wouldn't recommend you know, doing that either. Use these busa. Probably, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay, so that would be the opening discussion. 
try to practice some of those, especially with this verb tense and these things about probably and definitely giving examples. That would be what you practice now. So try to do that if you can. And I'm going to move this. I've been talking all day, so forgive me. I drink a lot of sengang cha, ginger tea. It's good for the throat. Uh, vocabulary. One. All these words are taken from Kang Kyung Hwa's interview on the BBC. So I listened to the BBC interview a couple of times and I got these words, these expressions from her. So these are the, not the sentences, just the words. So if you learn these, it's a good idea to then go back and watch the video again because then you'll be able to hear them in context and it's really important I've chosen words that I think you can use often I haven't chosen these idioms like it's raining cats and dogs that nobody really says that much you know it's a nice idiom it's a nice sokdam or things like that but I've really tried to focus on words that you can use every day the really uh, the really useful things so the first one the first word that you should learn is transparency tumyongsam tumyongsam transparency so that means see through that would be uh, something like that is transparent right the president promised to promote government transparency the tongyeongeun jeongbu-i tumyongsongul nopigetdago yakseokgetda right so he promised to promote government uh, transparency is transparency a noun a verb or an adjective noun so what's the adjective the adjective would be transparent yeah uh, and the adverb would be uh, tra transparently so you know it in all those forms we want our leaders to act we want our leaders to act transparently we don't want them to have secrets or things that are kept from the public of course if they're presidents and leaders they will have some things just like i as a professor try to you know have to keep some things from students however we want our leaders to act transparently adverb transparency Transparency is very important in a democracy. Transparency is very important in a democracy. <coughs> transparent. Well, you know, I like that guy. Or I, I like her, but she doesn't seem very transparent. She doesn't seem very transparent. I never know what's going on with her. Yeah? There's always something inside. I can't work it out. She's never that transparent. It could also be a negative thing. He's too transparent. Be like TMI. Right? If something is TMI, too much information, you're too transparent. Keep things inside sometimes. It's the first word. Transparency to Myeongsong. Now to pay off. This is quite difficult. Uh, if you look at this in the uh, dictionary or something, you'll have this idea of paying off your bills, paying off your debt, but it doesn't relate to money. It's not related to money. That's why you can see that Kang Kyung Hwa is very, uh, at least an advanced speaker, because she uses idiomatic expressions. She uses expressions like this, which are idiomatic, shows the level of her skill. Song Wa Rul Olida. The policy is paying off for the country. So it's working. It's working, working in Ilhadamago, but it's working, it's effective, right? It's having good results. So it's effective, it's working. The policy is working for the country. The policy is paying off for the country. The policy is bringing good results for the country. Right? So something is paying off. One time I tried to learn some examples now. Um, one time I tried learning Korean through, <clears throat> excuse me, through Gumon, Gumon Suop, where the teacher comes in and you have the little book. I tried learning Korean through Gumon, but it didn't really pay off that much. It didn't really pay off. 
it didn't really work it wasn't effective so I found a private teacher and we started studying together and that really paid off that really helped that really paid off my friend started waking up at 6 a.m uh, and exercising every morning now they look great it really paid off so it could be about language when you try to do something are the results good or bad so it really paid off it didn't really pay off I'm I've started I've started I've started to <clears throat> I've started to try to save money I hope it pays off I hope it pays off in the long run in the long run dangy doggo I hope it pays off right? so that's how you could use the future um, so to pay off that's quite a difficult one it's idiomatic but if you can get that then that's a very natural thing to be able to use three days in a row that's a bit easier but it's really good to have this Samuel Yontok I watched the drama for three days in a row Samuel Yontokuro Itaewon classroom pass sale ego hyunseul something like that we've watched Itaewon class for three days in a row but we only watch one episode per night we are not binging yeah we're not binging we're just doing one episode per evening right so it's a binge um in a row i went the hong day four days in a row yeah i have classes five days in a row so this days you can also change it's really important right i have three classes in a row so it could be you know she or do she say she something like that i have three classes in a row um for two semesters in a row for two semesters in a row or three semesters in a row i've studied with david for three semesters in a row uh, i stayed in australia so for days for classes for semesters if you're talking about dramas for three episodes in a row or sorry it would be better to say i watched i watched three episodes in a row that's like back to back back to back i watched three episodes in a row that would be pretty useful for you so that's a samilion sok hajiman but this il ah samhaki samkangi something like that you could change this ill to anything that you want and it's very useful uh to minimize something they are minimizing so obviously to minimize um in your computer screen you'll have this one this one and this one up here right up in the corners this one is minimize what's this one maximize what's this one close so this is minimize they are minimizing the risks we are mul cheso hwa hago isunida they minimizing the risks so in south korea people are trying to minimize the risks of covid-19 how are they minimizing the risks they are minimizing the risks by south korea is minimizing the risks by enforcing adopting social distancing south korea is minimizing the risks of covid-19 by adopting social distancing by enforcing social distancing enforcing is pop jogoro by law legally but by adopting is a bit softer you know it's more of a suggestion so um we need to minimize i tried to another example I tried to minimize difficulties by purchasing a camera and a microphone. I'm trying to minimize difficulties further by getting a stylus so I don't have to write with a mouse. So, although this is hard, we can minimize the difficulties. We can minimize the risks. We can minimize the chances of something happening. We need to minimize the chances of something going wrong. 
to minimize the chances of something going wrong, we can prepare. To minimize the chances of failing the test, you should study hard. Hmm? To minimize your chances of gaining too much weight, you should try to do a little bit of exercise. I don't mean that personally to you, it's just an example. I'm probably talking to myself here. I am talking to myself here. That's minimize. I hope you understand it. Also use maximize. Um, another good expression here. Large chunks. Don't worry. Right? Large, large chunks of something. So you could have large chunks of meat. You could go to a, a Samgibs Hale restaurant. It could be really nice meat. And sometimes it's very thin. Right? But sometimes you get large chunks of meat. You know, big sort of meaty things. Um, <clears throat> large chunks of large chunks of ice large chunks of snow uh, large chunks of text sometimes when you look at a ppt so i've got a ppt up here you sometimes see large chunks of text right the, the students just control copy paste put it all on the ppt and then read it right and it's just large chunks of text that would be a very natural way to use it right? large chunks of text large chunks of meat you could say, you know, large chunks of color. She bought a new dress. It's got some pattern here, but it's got large chunks of color all over it. Big pieces. Uh, in context, it was used like this in the interview. The sentences are not the exact same from the interview. I just made my own sentences, so beware of that. Of course, Kang Kyung Wah wasn't talking about your Taiwan class. Tang and Aji. Large chunks of the country are being monitored. Gukkawi kun dongari ga large chunks of the country are being monitored so it's not just tiny little bits here but sort of big chunks it's not everything but large chunks of the country and so it might be like Daegu, Busan, uh, bits in Seoul so large chunks of the country are being monitored large chunks large chunks of the student population large chunks of the student population are trying to get to terms with using online classes large chunks of um the final one from this page which is to vet to vet something or to vet someone now it doesn't mean i, I forgot what vet is to vet it doesn't mean that uh, animal vet to vet means right to check to analyze right before you get into someone you need to check them and so this is kind of a formal term. Uh, if you were, you know, going to go on a blind date with someone, you might get on your phone and check their cacao, check what their pictures are or something like this. That's kind of vetting, actually. That's vetting, but we wouldn't say, uh, oh, I vetted him. But that's what it is, right? Uh, but vetting is slightly more formal. So the, the, the meaning is the same, the actions are the same, but we vet people before we employ them. So maybe before I became a jogyosu, it's holiday, maybe they vetted me somehow, that might work. Um, before people come into the country, for immigration, you have to vet people, you don't just let everybody in, right? So more informally, I'm trying to think, maybe you uh, could check up on someone. I you know, checked up on him. I checked him online. I checked her out online to check someone out. To check, I checked her out online and she seems like a reasonable person. I vetted him and he seems appropriate. Right? Same kind of meaning, but different things. South Korea needs to vet people coming in to the country. Right? South Korea needs to vet people coming into the country. So this is a, a verb, as you can see, to vet people. Yeah? Uh, that's the vocabulary there. Try to get hold of some of it. Again, you don't need to get every word. Try to get one or two and get comfortable with them. So you can use them in different tenses and situations. Uh, let's move on and... Uh, Try to make your own examples of these sentences. That's always what I tell students to do in class. You know, give me an example and then I'll check the grammar. Give me another example, another example, till finally it gets stuck in your head. Discussion two would have been this. Move my face. I'm not transparent enough, I guess. 
Uh, so we have three questions in a row. How do you feel about the country's response thus far? Have you been proud, disappointed? How do you feel thus far? So thus far is a little bit formal, but it's it's totally fine if you say it. You can say so far, so far is that one. Jigunkaji, right? so far or thus far. Well, thus far, I've been rather happy. It would be a normal. How do you feel about it? Well, thus far, it's been hard. Thus far, it's been hard, but it's been okay. How do you feel about the country's response? Have you been proud, disappointed? Of course, everything is very political. Some parts of the country, some parts of the country have been disappointed. They have been disappointed. However, large chunks of the population have been more satisfied with the government and the government policies. I'm not trying to be too political here. That's not the goal. But some people have been. Some people have been disappointed. Other people have been more satisfied. Large chunks of the population have said that. Dun, 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 right? So you're keeping in this tense, which is important. Make sure you can use this with present perfect tense. What are your reactions when you see other when you see how when you see how other countries are dealing with the situation? So if you take this, change you into I. When I see how other countries are dealing with this situation, comma, and then you can continue your sentence. So that's the question, and you can break it up, and you you know, take out this. You don't need this at the moment. When I see how other countries are dealing with a situation, I feel sad. When I see how other countries are de dealing with the situation, I feel prouder of Korea. Relatively, I feel relatively. It's bigger or something. Uh, comparatively. Uh, so when I see how other countries are dealing with the situation, I'm often surprised. I'm often surprised. I'm often surprised why toilet paper has become such a big thing. Actually, in each country, it seems like there's there's always something. So in South Korea, it's become masks. In other countries, it's become toilet paper. A lot of that happens sometimes because if something goes out on social media, hey, there are not many masks. Hey, there's not much toilet paper. What does everybody do? They run out and they go and buy some. <laughs> and so that makes the problem worse. Things exacerbate. Things snowball. We get bigger. So, uh, also, when seeing how uh, some other countries are dealing with the situation, it makes me appreciative. It makes me appreciate. It makes me appreciative of South Korea's healthcare system. Yes, it, it, it's not the best thing in the world, but it, it's pretty good compared to some places, especially when I see how other countries are dealing with this. Let's take this and just change it a bit. A lot of countries are dealing with the situation differently. A lot of countries are dealing with the situation, dealing, handling, managing, coping. A lot of countries are dealing with the situation differently. For example, uh, last week in England and Germany, there was talk of trying to get herd immunity, trying to get large chunks of the population, again, debubun, trying to get large chunks of the population immune to the disease by exposing them to it. Of course, this was a very controversial idea, and it seems both governments have changed on that. But we know that uh, many countries are dealing with the situation differently. So how do you feel? What are your reactions? Have you seen anything online, uh, etc.? Number three, do you think there is something more that needs to be done? Are we missing something? Are we missing anything? Do you think there is something more that needs to be done? We could start thinking about. We could start thinking about. We could start thinking about reshaping the economy. We could start thinking about changing the education system. We could start thinking about how we deal with pandemics. So we could start thinking about, we should, we need to, we could is a little bit softer. We could start thinking about uh, the global economy a bit more 
a bit differently. We could start looking at how we treat nurses, doctors. Obviously, in society, uh, the people that earn the most money are, are often pop stars and celebrities and uh, the, the nurses, the medical workers, the, the firemen, the firewomen, and, and, and these people, they're not earning the big bucks, but at this time, they're still out there working because the society needs them. Without these people, society cannot survive. We don't need everybody sitting in the offices, and that's why they're at home sometimes. But maybe uh, we need to think about, we could start thinking about how we start treating uh, different people in our society. That might be something. So there are three questions, you know, you could, you could start discussing those. That would be the next thing. Let's have a look at the, the second list of vocabulary. So you have another seven words. That makes 14 in total for this week. It's not too much, okay? I'm not trying to put too many there. See how many you can get from 14. The first one, complacent. Complacent. Complacency. Right? Complacently. Complacence would be myungsa. Complacent would be the adjective. Right? Hyungyungsa. To be complacent. Hyunsile anjuhada. That's when you give somebody side dishes, is it? Anju Hada? That's a Aj, sorry. Um, the country is not growing complacent despite the numbers dropping. Deamingu kun sutjaga julosumedo bulgu hago hyunchile anju haji and goisumnida. My Korean does struggle a bit sometimes. If you do see any mistakes in the translations, feel free uh, to tell me. But the country is not growing complacent. This is like that uh, complacent is that sokdam, Korean one. Wonsongidul namo eso dojinda. Even monkeys fall from the trees because they get complacent, right? That's what happens. So that's the idea. I started learning Korean and I was very dedicated, but then unfortunately I got complacent. We hope that. Even though the numbers are getting better these days, the numbers are getting better these days, we hope that the country doesn't get the country doesn't get complacent. Right? We hope it doesn't get complacent. We hope complacency doesn't start creeping in. Because complacency often doesn't just come in like that. Complacency creeps in, right? Dum dum. Dumb. So we hope that complacency doesn't start creeping in. That would be a very natural way to put complacency with creeping in. Right? Complacency starts creeping in. Complacency started creeping in. How can you avoid complacency creeping in despite studying online? You can avoid complacency creeping in by creating schedules, making habits, speaking to your friends, all these things, right? Complacency, complacent, complacency creeping in, to grow complacent, to become complacent. A lot of these words try to make, try to think of a time when complacency started creeping into your life and make a sentence. See if you can do that. Interdependent, independent, Margo, interdependent. Sangowi, South Korea is an interdependent country. So it's it's got a lot of syllables in. Interdependent. Interdependent. You need to be able to say it quickly and, and naturally in a sentence. So although South Korea is an interdependent country, it does have a lot of autonomy. Interdependent is an adjective. So what's the noun? Interdependency. Interdependency has grown with globalization. Interdependency has grown because of capitalism and the connecting of all the economic systems. So interdependent and interdependency. Uh, it, it's rather, let's say, uh, not a political word or an economic word, but it's a little bit more formal, this one, but it's still absolutely great word. Um, applicable, applicable. 
해당합니다. Applicable is a great word, but you never hear many Koreans say it. Okay, so again, this is a uh, testament to Kang Kang Hwa's uh, language. The process is not really applicable in other countries. 이 프로세스는 다른 국가에서는 적용되지 않습니다. Right? We can't really... Sometimes translations don't go 완벽. Um, the process is not applicable. It works here. The process works in South Korea. But it's not really applicable elsewhere. Many people talk about when they mention reunification or 통일, 남북관계, South-North relations. They say, well, we need to look at Germany. But then you say, is that really applicable? Is that really applicable now in 2020? Is that really applicable here? You know, we need to have an education system like Finland or something. But is that really applicable here? Because South Korea has 51 million citizens. It's a different population, different geographic. So is it really applicable? You use this in questions quite a lot. Is this idea really applicable? Is it applicable here? Is it applicable now? Hmm? Um, it's the same as apply. I want to apply this pros. We cannot. Sorry, if I take this sentence and I use apply. We cannot really apply this process to other countries would be the same thing. We cannot apply this process to other countries. The process is not really applicable in other countries. So you're taking out the pronouns of we and just making it more sort of general speech. Um, a threat. We hope. The COVID-19 disease is a threat to our way of living. Uh, COVID-19 병은 우리의 생활 방식에 위협이 됩니다. Threat. Threat. So you need to have your, you know, it has this th 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 th. Make sure you get that. It's a bit weird doing that on camera, but it's so important when you say words like this if you want to sound nice sometimes you have to use your tongue and give the right you don't always do it so pronounced you don't always go this really and it is the most important thing it's the most important thing but it's not the huh? that's one of the really important things you want to get away if you're speaking like german or doggy or do maybe yeah but in english you need to get this th with your tongue the and that's in this word here, threat, okay? It requires a really quick movement of the tongue. So, um, threat. COVID-19 is a threat to our way of living, perhaps. Um, it might threaten many countries' economies. It might threaten the economy. Might threaten the economy. North Korea often threatens people with its weapons and missiles. Okay, America often also threatens people with its missiles and weapons. Okay, so to threaten someone. You could also, so a threat is Myungsa, obviously, and it's always a, a threat or the threat. The threat is very real. Korea, right? So it's not just any threat, but the threat. The threat is very real these days. The threat of catching the, th threat of catching the disease is very real. If maybe uh, you want to turn it into an adjective, you could use threatening. So you might say, I was traveling late at night, I was on the subway, and I felt threatened. Yeah? There was a couple of people on there, I didn't feel safe, I felt threatened. I felt threatened by the situation. I felt threatened by what was going on. I felt threatened by her actions. I felt threatened by what he was saying. Okay, so to feel threatened by something. It was a threat. I felt threatened by dung dung dung. Okay, so collaboration. And I'm suddenly curious whether this and this is the same handa. I need to check that. I like checking handas if they're the same. Is that the same handa? Hanja? This is we hom, we hop, we. Anyway, collaboration. We need collaboration. Sorry, I get lost sometimes. We need collaboration. Okay, so uh, the verb, this is a noun. The verb would be to collaborate. Myungsa, collaboration. Adjective, what's the ad adjective of this word? Collaborative, collaborative. So we, we can put these in more sort of informal situations. Last week we talked about 
uh, K-pop and things like that. So you could say, um, I'm trying to remember now of some examples. They always go when you're videoing something. Um, who was the one that did Boy With Love with BTS? How's he or how's... BTS collaborated with her. They collaborated. Kanyang, they collaborated on that song. BTS collaborated with her. BTS are collaborating with more and more artists these days, especially Western artists. So one sentence would just be they collaborated. They collaborated on the project. They collaborated on their midterm assignment. I was in a team project, but there was no collaboration. There, yeah, are we old saucer? There was no collaboration. Um, he's he's very collaborative. He likes working with people. He doesn't like working by himself. He's very collaborative. So, collaboration, to collaborate, collaborative. The words that you can use about music, about projects, about anything. It's not just related to this specific. So COVID-19 situation, that's really important. Overcome, you know, lovely positive word to finish here. Can the country overcome this situation? Right. Can the country overcome this situation? It's a verb. So what's the past tense? Overcame. It was difficult, but we eventually overcame it. It was difficult, but we eventually overcame it. I was struggling with adapting to Korean society, but eventually I overcame it. I was struggling with, one more, more. I was struggling with my English. I was struggling with losing weight. I was struggling to lose weight. I was struggling with my English. I was struggling to lose weight. I was struggling to understand what the assignment was but eventually but eventually i overcame it i hope i overcome it i hope i overcome it it's something that i'm worried about but i hope i overcome it i think we will definitely overcome this we'll overcome it eventually we'll definitely overcome it so uh that's a word if you want to be positive generally used you can see there uh I want to say only used uh, in the verb form to overcome something. It, you need that to overcome, to overcome a noun. You can't say we overcame. We overcame it. It. You need that kind of subject there or whatever it is, the object. We overcame it. We will overcome it. Right? But you can't just say we overcome. It's a bit strange. So that's the uh, final page of vocabulary. These would be. I've just pressed the wrong button and uh, lost it. Shall we find it back again? Hi. The final discussion questions. Love computers, don't you? Um, so these will be the final discussion questions for you, obviously. Some of them are a bit more serious than the others, but it's important to talk about serious things because you're advanced and probably you don't need to practice talking about your favorite color, right? So have you heard about some of the attacks on Asian people abroad? Have you heard about? It's really cool to get. Have you heard? Of, have you heard about that? Have you heard about what's going on? Have you heard about what's going on? Have you heard about what's going on abroad? Have you heard about what's going on abroad with Asian people? Have you heard about the attacks on Asian people that's going on abroad? Haven't you heard about that? You haven't heard about that? tag questions there right so uh when i heard when i when i heard about when i heard about those things well when i heard about those things excuse me when i heard about those things i was shocked when i heard about that i was rather shocked when i heard about what was happening i was confused when i heard about have you heard about haven't you heard about when you hear about this, you'll be amazed. Trust me, when you hear about this, trust me, when you hear about this, you'll be really shocked. And then you tell someone a secret, right? When you hear about this, what was your reaction to Kang Kyung Hwa? Kang Kyung Hwa's performance on the BBC? You know, how did you feel? Did you feel that she did good? Politics aside, there is a South Korean female speaking English to the world's media. You know, there's a goal for you. There's a specific reason sometimes why I try to find 
uh, female speakers and, and people that you can, I don't mean to emulate or to look up to uh, in that way. It, it's not about role models or politics, but it's about identifying and saying, well, that's kind of like me, right? Because I'm not really that like you. I'm some white guy with a beard and you don't want to sound like me. You want to get some of the things that I'm trying to teach you, but you want to sound like you. And it's better if you have people that you can identify and recognize with. That's what I'm trying to do. Um, do you think people's lives will be fundamentally different after this? Do you think they'll be fundamentally, will they be fundamentally different after this? Ah, the, some things will change. Some things will change, but I don't think people's lives will be that fundamentally different after this. Yeah, a lot's going to change. I think so many things are going to be so fundamentally different from before. There's a fundamental difference. There is a fundamental difference between how country A is dealing with the situation and country B is dealing with the situation. There's a fundamental difference between the two. Hey, David, don't you think this is like that? No, there's a fundamental difference between that. Sorry, there's a fundamental difference between them. There's a fundamental difference between the way you and I think about the situation. Look, we disagree. There's a fundamental difference about the way we think about the situation, but we can still be friendly. We can still discuss it. We can still talk about it like mature adults. Despite the fundamental differences, despite the fundamental differences between people, hopefully COVID-19 brings us all onto the same side, yeah? despite the fundamental differences. These would be the questions that you would discuss here, um, hopefully using some of the language. Now, coming up here to the end of the lecture, I want to tell you a little bit about your assignment. We're going to have to find ways to get you slowly interacting with other people because a lot of you, you're, you're recording yourself and you're videoing yourself. That's great. Soon you're going to have to test that by talking to other people. But let's just first build your confidence in this stage so we don't just throw you straight in because that would be weird and hard, right? So that's eventually coming. So if you feel a bit isolated or by yourself, don't worry. You can always talk to me about it or put a notice on the board, right? Um, one thing I... Do I encourage this or not? Well, I'm going to suggest it to you. Uh, would be... I guess you could, like, draw moustaches on people. I never thought about that before. Um, sorry. You could start, you know, having a look at this... You know, you could see how people deal with YouTube comments. I'm not trying to say get into a YouTube argument or a comment with uh, some people. But, you know, if I just pick one here, hats off, hats off. What an intelligent, well-informed and well-spoken lady. The world needs more politicians like her. There's some fabulous English in there. Hats off. Right. Bravo. Fighting. The hats off. That's what that means. So you might find some interest because you've had these materials. Go back and listen to it. Go back and play it again so you can hear the language that I've taught you in the context. And maybe while you're listening to it, if you're bored, you don't want to look at Andrew Marr's face or, 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 or Joe Rogan's face. Go down and see what the people are actually saying and go and look at this live English and, you know, create a fake account and start talking to people and practicing your English because that might help you. You never know. That might just be what you need. So you don't have to do that. That's not mandatory. I'm just trying to show you because we use recent videos, not textbooks. People on there are still talking and interacting. It's essentially live. OK, so be safe, be careful, things like that. But there's live English there for you people all around the world speaking it's right there for you to use mm, okay so if we come to the end of of this thing i would like you to do the same kind of assignment this week so i know it's not that exciting but you should be used to it now you should be able to do a good job of it this one so please record some thoughts about any of these questions about anything else if you want to talk about in pohang they have drive through hair drive through sashimi something like that if you want to talk about the uh the recent numbers or anything related to this situation okay you can use my discussion questions you can use your own discussion questions ultimately i want to try to hear you use some of the vocabulary in there or some of the things that i've taught you i've taught you about verb tenses and 
uh, some expressions when I'm answering these questions. So try to use some of those for me because that 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 kind of haliong haliong hada that utilizing using is how you'll improve. If you don't use anything, if you don't challenge yourself, your level will stay like this. It's only when you start like trying to push, it's hard that you'll get better. So look at doing that for me. If you have any questions, let me know, uh, and I'm happy to help you. If you have any, you know, what's that word? How do I say this? Is this sentence right? I'm your teacher. Send me a message. It's great if you use the uh, e-class thing because I'm getting emails from all over the place. So if you use the e-class thing, I, I see them all and I have that on basically for most of the day. Uh, use the e-class. There's one announcement I'm going to put up on the... There's two announcements I need to tell you about. The first is please, uh, if you're going to use videos, try to find ways to link them in there or upload them because I've, got, I've been sent loads of videos and it was about, uh, you know, 12 gigabytes of data that's coming onto my computer and that's quite a lot these days so um, try to find links if you can if you're not sure about that ask me I try to find links or, or ways to send up do files that are smaller uh, the other thing is that Soyode has said that uh, this is the one Soyode has said that now we can upload YouTube onto eClass so now they can check when you've watched the video and they've asked me to ask you to go back and watch the first video, which is a bit of a bummer because you've already watched it. So, can you hang on click hago and then go and sit in the other room and play your piano or watch Netflix or something like that? That will check your attendance. There will be an announcement about that on the website in Korean. Thanks for listening. I hope it was useful for you. I'm, I'm trying to create modern, up to date lessons to give you the vocab about the topics that we're talking about. I'm going to slowly try to find ways to get you speaking to other people. For now, I've shown you some digital ways. If you have any questions, let me know. But good luck with your English. And uh, I look forward to hearing what you have to say about this latest topic. So thanks very much. Stay happy, stay healthy, and uh, see you next time. Goodbye.